Almost Pod Podcast, episode eight. That is right. Good. Did you know that <laughs> I read that something like 80% of new podcasts don't make it past episode eight? You told me that on episode one, as I recall, and okay. I was thinking, Psh, we got this made. We're so and good. And then it took us a month to make episode eight after making episode seven. So I was one. I was thinking, oh, it's that statistic. It's it's starting to stack up against us. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it's still incredibly hard to do this during the pandemic. I'm exhausted doing nothing. It's so weird how doing nothing is more exhausting than doing things. Yeah. And then, I, I don't know. I don't understand. And then it. I get into a mode of like you have so much time that there's no, there's no incentive to finish things on time or with any reasonable time frame. So it'll take me sometimes. It'll take me three days to do something that takes five to ten minutes, and it just keeps getting worse and worse. And now I'm getting less done because I'm like, I never. It's yeah, when you're at home. Anything. When you're at home and then you're going to go do fun stuff later, you have the incentive to like, I'm going to clean this or I'm going to finish this project because I want to go and do something. And now it's like, well, I'm going to watch TV again, or I'm going to do this thing that I don't want to do again. And I'm also reaching the point where TV is just, it's just not cutting it anymore. I feel like I'm just hibernating. Yeah. So like when I'm watching TV, I'm not watching TV to be entertained. I'm not even really paying attention. I, it's it's on i'm on the couch and it's just i'm getting into a mental state of the world is going by me and i'm just not really participating yeah. and then i after a while i'm fine with it it's a weird thing and that's why i don't do anything because I'm, I'm in my mental zone i've mm. become a monk isn't that uh. what monks do i don't i don't know i think about. they meditate Instead of watch TV, but same same thing. <laughs> Meditating and watching TV, I believe, are the same thing. Yeah. yeah so that's that's where I'm at now. I'm, I'm in a, a monk. I'm in a yeah. monk stage of quarantine. Yeah, and that's how I watch TV in general. There's people who are they'll recommend these shows, and I'm like, well, do I have to pay attention? Yeah. TV to me is passive time. I'm not. I'm not trying to pay attention. I have to go make you know, dinner and then I'm going to do laundry yep. and then I'm going to hang out with my dog. And then I should be able to come back 40 minutes later and still understand what's going on. Yeah. I'm sitting there with my wife. We're watching TV and she asked me, Oh, what? I missed it. What did so-and-so say? And I'm like in a no complete idea. daze. What? I have no idea. And she's like, well, you're, what are you doing? I'm just sitting here. Yeah. Well, what do you say? I don't know. What's wrong yeah. with you? I'm not paying any attention. It's just these weird conversations about yesterday. I want to go read a book before bed because I've reached watching TV after what it's been four months. It's just punishment now. It is like there's nothing you think back in the day when you're like going to work and then now it's like oh watching TV again for 12 hours. You cannot get into it anymore. That's where Yikes. we're at. Well, you did mention you had uh downloaded tiktok i have have you found anything punk related on tiktok or is it just dance yet. videos so now tiktok understands that i don't like dances so okay. all of a sudden my experience has completely changed from dancing which is all i got in the beginning and that's why i was kind of over it pretty fast because i don't really <laughs> care fast. about dancing at all <laughs> um but now it's all comedy it's tips it's all these stuff and so now it's just become, I'm, I'm obsessed with it again okay. because I'm now not. there's no dancing and it's more of content I care about. I don't even care what, even if they brought punk stuff to it, I'm not downloading that app. I'm not looking up TikTok stuff. I just think it's a dark hole for a 40 year old man to be going down. I don't, I'm not even social media -ing. I'm just. I will take a look and, see <laughs> and do a state of the punk tiktok report uh, next right. time <laughs> i was trying to move it into okay we're, we're we're getting into the punk topics we got plenty we do i so one of the things we were talking about last time is i mentioned that emo night they did a kind of racism in the alternative in emo scene talk um and it was a conversation led by uh i think there was like five or six people uh -huh. um, and there's two parts. So I, I, I watched the first one. I think it's like an hour and a half, but it's recorded. So it's yeah. available. Um, but yeah, it's, Courtney it was pretty, Coles. 
I believe, is the moderator. I was just looking that up. Oh, yeah. I didn't know it was two nights until, well, because I wasn't paying attention. So I'm watching it on my little mini screen. Uh-huh. And uh, I, I just didn't notice that it said day two. So I listened to day two, but not day oh, one. Oh, perfect. So okay. We, 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 we watched the whole thing. So what I thought was cool was uh, that they didn't just have musicians, which a lot of the times when we talk about the state of the scene or diversity in the scene, everybody's always thinking about, the bands and maybe yeah. the audience, but there are so many other things to the scene. So photographers, bloggers, people who make zines, people who write reviews, people who make podcasts and so on. And so um, they even touched on how, you know, it's a symbiotic relationship and everyone in the scene kind of um, depends on everyone else. I thought it was really uh, interesting because uh, at least in the part one, they talked about how I think there's a big misconception that there's no such thing as racism in alternative yeah. scenes. And I think we all like to think that because, I mean, you don't want to think that you're hanging out with people that are problematic or that there's any problems in this thing that we all kind of opted into being a part of our lives. Uh, but that is not true. It's obvious when you go to a show. Yeah. And yeah. if you pay attention. And then they talked about um, other things. Like they talked about like what can allies do? Uh, they talked about cancel culture. And, and But yeah, I thought part one was pretty interesting. I wish I just got to see, there's definitely people who are more vocal in the conversation. So I think some of the, per usual, when you have like, it's kind of a more of an open forum, you, yeah. Not everybody gets equal voices. So I think some of the people have really interesting perspectives and stories, and I didn't get to hear as much from them as I would have liked to. Oh, that's the same. In night two, I think you brought, you just said the, the, the key was it was an open forum. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you did just have some stronger voices that were just, you know, they got a lot to say. They got, they got, <laughs> there's plenty to yeah. talk about. Same moderator, Courtney Coles, and then it was Melian Junius, Eternity Martis, Amy Love, Georgia South, and Joy Purvey. And I mean, they, I don't think the day one and day two, because the, the, the one I was seeing, it was more about how to create more of a community and mm -hmm. embrace each other within the community it was it was more of like emotional bonds motion connections and then a little bit into it went into like the power structure it's just you know you're not feeling welcome in your own scene and yeah. like think ways that we can change that and way to support the arts better and bring more people in and then they're just talking about the love of punk and how they got into it in the first place and that's all the same as same as you, me. you know yeah. this is just like you can get the aggression, the anger, frustration, you just vent, fast songs, loud music, no drum machines, just like you're just going all, you know, it's all just pure heart, just going straight, yeah. straight at it. And that's all, that's all the same stuff. So I yeah. mean, that was cool just from another perspective to hear things. Yeah. And, and then to take from uh, it, just another perspective. Another thing they talked a little bit about, which was interesting was like mentors and it's always an issue when you work in an industry that's dominated by a certain type of people or demographics. Um, it is really hard to then find people who might want to mentor or help you if once when you're getting started as a band or as a photographer or whatever. And so they talked a little bit about that. And yeah. On night two, they talked about right now, uh, you know, white people like myself. So we're listening to new perspectives and they were really hoping that it wasn't a trend or something yeah. that would just fade away. And so that was the takeaway for me is it's not something like, okay, for the next two weeks, I'm going to look into this and then I'm going to just move on to the next thing. It's more of like, no, now that you know, like if I was being ignorant forever, not paying attention to anything, well, not, I can't be like that anymore. I have to change and it's got to continue on. So that was just a concern they brought up that caught my attention because I just thought, oh, well, you're right. You know, like ever there is an ear right now. Everyone's out there listening for yeah. the new, new voices um and is that just going to drop off the planet as soon as we all start going back to work and stuff like that and, yeah uh, and I, I hope not but i i've also wondered the same thing just from seeing uh kind of the frequency and the amount of information my friends are posting and i'm like are they going to be able to sustain that kind of passion going forward and i don't know i i think it's there's definitely what what i try to think about is what can i sustain long term and make bigger changes going forward not like what can you post in the next two weeks because that's not 
you know, these, yeah. these are issues that have been going on for so long in, in our world that, and so many of us, so many people before us have been trying to solve them and they're not going to go away in two weeks. Like that's, oh. I, I wish, I wish we could solve everything in two weeks. That would be amazing, but that's not, that's not realistic expectation. Yeah. But I definitely think we'll be talking about new bands more every time we have a podcast we can bring in different stuff you know like we have an yeah. opportunity so that's kind of the way i think of it is you know for us for this show we just got to bring more more to the table than same old same old every time yeah i've definitely i've seen a couple of lists that have been compiled of bands that have diverse band members i haven't had a chance to check all of them out but that is on my to-do list uh, there's tons of stuff out there if you uh, look into it, and I started to, so I'll I'll talk about that more as we move along into the future, and that's a way I found some, we're going to talk about more bands that we looked into this week for like, you know, bands of the week, albums of the week, that kind of stuff, so I got yeah. more on that then. Yeah, and then another thing I recently watched was the band Faya, they did a Joan Jett, uh, like, live stream, stream. Uh, on there's a platform called stage it and they do live shows and this is the second one of theirs I've seen during quarantine so first time they did Spanish covers of Bikini Kill and then the second time they did Spanish covers of Joan Jett okay. songs and it was really cool uh, they actually have they do like Q&A's and they even have kind of video backdrops and a little bit of production going on so and it's also just impressive that they themselves translate the songs and learn how to play them that's pretty cool they are on um Blackheart Records so oh okay well, that's Jets, Joan Jett's label or label so yeah she even recorded a little intro for them for the the, the second streams and then i also saw that joan jett i think she was doing a fest a show there as well but i think it was 40 dollars. oh wow which is how much i would pay for a live show yeah that was uh you know you knew it has it knew it had to come eventually. Yeah. <laughs> well before i move into that did, were they playing fail were they playing together in yes, one yes they were in the room? same room okay because yeah. i'm still you know i'm wondering about band practice like, how am I going to have band practice? It sounds like some of them live together. Is this like one, one benefit of being in a squatter band where you're just living yeah. with everyone in your band and like some dingy uh, studio? Is that, yeah. hey, we can still have band practice. Like, uh, else, other people like myself and you, we can't do it. Like, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. No, I did. Pl I played guitar for the first time in like three months the other day. I'm like, oh, oh. I, got, I got a new, new song because this is ridiculous so it's all good yeah. but got to practice with the band or it's nothing so. yeah and then there was another festival that looked kind of interesting it was like a called trees virtual festival 2000 um, trees and, and i was really interested because thrice was playing and then jimmy world and cancer bats but it was it, it was english and so i didn't understand how much it costs in us dollars which i could have done the translation but it didn't show the times posted and so i didn't really want to pay money to have to wake up at 5 a.m to watch something i need i need more information up front yeah and so i look you sent me like hey go check out this festival so i went and i checked yeah. it out and i thought it was upcoming yeah. Uh, oh no. It already I, happened. It was, <laughs> July 9th through 11th. Yeah, it already so, happened. Oh, you know that was last week. Uh Yeah. But so I thought okay, well, I'm still going to go check it out. Yeah. Cuz you know this is this is what the third or fourth festival that we've just checked out. So I mean yeah. we did we did Warp Tour or not No, Warped Punk Tour. Rock Bowling. Punk Rock Bowling. We did Punk Rock Bowling. Right, that other one. And uh now this one. And so then I look. I'm like, "Oh, I want to go watch Cancer Bats because it hmm. said the Cancer Bats and then the video, and then it said 46 minutes. I'm like, oh, they oh. did a full set? Mm -hmm. That's cool. So then I click the button, and I wait to see the set. I'm like, oh, I guess this is free. That was my thought. I was like, oh, this is free. There's lots of bands posting their, their songs. Or No, it was not the band playing for 45 minutes. It was like maybe the singer just goofing off, and then they had all three – other band members in a zoom chat later chatting about various stuff and i'm like what this is not what what did i what am i looking at and so so a lot and then 
I looked, they had uh, Dustin from Thrice as the Thrice oh. video. It was like a five minute thing, uh, but I didn't click on it because I was, you know, I was just, I was just overwhelmed by all the yeah. little videos. And I was just, what do they have? What do they have? Um, so yeah, it was not the stuff that's up there that I found okay. just on the, the posted videos section of the, I guess it was the Facebook page. It just had them doing like acoustic songs, same as the other stuff. Oh, okay. Strip down performances. They had Jimmy rolled a video. It was like 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Uh, but I didn't find like full on sets. There were some other uh, bands that did have like a full band performance, but it still is not the full. We have not found the full festival experience. No. I don't even know what that means, though. I, I, I have not yeah. found something that I don't know what, what it even is if I found it. I feel like we're in that part of quarantine where, you know, I'll pay 5 or $10, but I'm not going to pay above that for a virtual thing because you just, they're not that good yet. Like, no, that's, the, yeah. So when you yeah. see Joan Jet 40 bucks, I'm like, whoa, yeah. boy. Because, you know, the, whoa. going back to the conversation about, you know, the scene and all the other people that we don't think about. There's a lot of people that make these bands look and sound good yeah. on stage. There's light people, there's sound people, there's there are people who tune their guitar. Like some of them, you know, some of the things they can figure out how to do on their own. They know how to tune their instruments, mm -hmm. but doing the, you know, the audio and stuff, that's not, not that's not everyone's skill set. <laughs> but, right? So it's yeah. like, I don't, and with it being, uh, you know, on the computer, not all connections are great for that. And yeah, no input. kidding. It's like, it's just, it's, it's a very complicated Four thing. Bucks. We've been doing regular festivals or festivals and concerts for so long. People know what equipment to use, what, yeah. how to make it work. Now we're just trying to figure out how to make the virtual shows work. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a hit or miss. And I can't, I no. still like $40. What are you getting? Yeah. Holy cow, <laughs> man. It's crazy. But I mean, I figure it will be worth, it's, I guess it's worth something worth paying for, I would imagine, but $40, that's why I'm still, but I feel that way about everything though. So is it just me? Is it just me? <laughs> mm, I don't know. $40 for a virtual event, just, that's not the right starting point. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's high for maybe the festival, but one band, that's, yeah. that's kind of high to me. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, but yeah, right. On the so other hand, you don't want, if you're a band and you're, and you can charge $40 for a regular you? concert ticket, if you undercut yourself by doing all these free shows and $5 shows, does that mean forever more you can't go back to yeah, charging 40? Maybe there's a concern. So maybe the thought is, well, we normally charge forty dollars. We'll continue to charge forty dollars, and if no one likes it, no one likes it. But we'll start it's, there. I it's don't. Know. Kind of like going back to the whole downloading music for free argument, mm. and people would say, "Oh, but it's okay because these bands will be able to support themselves because I'll buy the T-shirt and I'll do all ah. these other things." And then what happened? All the concert ticket prices have gone up. The t-shirt prices no have doubt. gone up a lot. And now we pay to stream music, but the bands no longer make any money off of that yeah. basically at all. That now like, mm. it, it, it did make, it did devalue the price of music. You're right. I mean, that is the only really way to make any money. So and, I guess you got to do it. And, uh, and the counter argument is there's, there's songs I'll listen to that I'm not going to go to a show or yeah. buy the t-shirt. And some people don't even go to concerts. They yeah. will listen to music on their phone, but they don't go to concerts. Yeah. And you bring up some solid points, especially like the Spotify thing. I've just, you know, I just found tons of bands, mm -hmm. but they didn't make any of the money that I just, I paid the $10 a month. Mm -hmm. No one's getting $10. Like for me, streaming, like they get a partial amount of a partial penny. It's, you're right, it's screwed. It is good for the <laughs> fan. It's just not good for the. Unless you're the uh, number, you got to be in the top 10 basically to make any money. Cause, yeah. you know, it's like 99.9% .9 don't make anything. And then the one, that little yeah. tiny bit, they make it all. And those are probably <laughs> the people that do the stadium tours that. Yeah, the big bands. 
Stay big. So much money off of touring. Anyways, wow. so there's some new music recently. New music. There was. Uh, first one is there's a new release from Bad Cop, Bad Cup. They have a new album. It's called The Ride. And first of all, what a perfect band name for yeah. <laughs> yeah. summer 2020 release. I know. Like, I've always gotten a kick out of their band name, but when, when they had a new album, I, I saw that it was coming out. I was like, man, what good timing. Like, yep. this is the perfect time thought. for them. I, at first I thought, oh, man, you can't go out on tour. It's a bad time to put out a new release. And then Bad Cop, Bad Cop. No, right now is the time to release yeah. that album. <laughs> it is like the perfect name for, I'm yeah. so glad they had a summer release because that would have been a huge miss opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, it, you know the album though wasn't really about bad cops. So it's more of a no. it's, it's more of a personal experience for each of the band members. It was uh, you know, like more of an emotional lyric album, but mm -hmm. still it was pop punk. Uh, you know, we got into Bad Cop, Bad Cop because of Stacey D. She was in the Angry Amputees, and they were a local band in the Bay Area, and they put out Slut Bomb, uh, and that was awesome. And so, I mean, since that album, I've just been a fan and I'll, I'll just, I'm going to stay a fan just because of slut ball and angry. Yeah. Uh, this is their third album and this one's the ride. And I thought it, it's just as good as the other two. If, um, maybe I like the warrior slightly more. Cause I think the warrior is slightly a little more angry. This one is more of like, th this is my life's experiences and I'm going to tell you a story about them. Whereas the warrior was just like, oh, I'm a badass motherfucker and I like punk rock. But I mean, the songs are still fast. They're still aggressive. Yeah. They're still loud. I mean, they're tight as hell. Uh, that, that like recording is, that's like perfection. And they got these three part harmonies, like every song where the, like three band members are singing and they got these bits. I uh, know it's really good. Like the music is very musical. It's very melodic and it's fast. It's punk uh, and it's catchy as hell. I like the second half of the album. It was more like I listened to the first couple songs. And I'm like, this is all right. It's all right. It's all right. And then it was like, then I started, oh, okay, this is good. This song's good. This song's good. But when I was thinking that was like the last half of the album, I uh, liked it better. I don't yeah. even know why. I mean, there's nothing really that different between the first half and the second half. It's not like they have a wide variety. There is one like singy songy acoustic -y type ballad, but the other 11 songs are all, you know, three minute power pop. Yeah. Pop. The, the whole album's around 30 minutes Yeah, or full length. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I, it's a band I've seen a bunch live. Well, because I mean, it's a new day. We don't, we don't listen to albums the same way as we used to. Yeah, so that's Are we true. ever going to listen to it like we listen to Slut Bomb? Like, no, because oh, we don't yeah. listen to albums like we listen to that stuff. So, I mean, yeah. that album is like 15 years old now or more. Yeah. Uh, but I but yeah, it was, a, it was, so it kind of surprised me how much I, I liked it. It's a, it's a solid, solid album. It's on fat. Yeah. So it's got the fat sound. Like, it's good. It is good. I will definitely be on the lookout for them playing live. I think the live show's good, but uh, yeah, it is. That might be a year from now, so mm -hmm. I'll just have to wait yeah. around. But I will wait around because they're good. Then Sewer Rats. Yeah, brought... that was another album. Or there's a new song by a band called Sewer Rats. They're from Germany, and it's called Magic Summer. That's the name of the album. There is the there's album. A, there's That's a song. Right. There's a song on there called that That's as right. well. And I just thought, well, what a pick for the summer because that is, it's definitely a summery, upbeat, pop punk thing. Yeah. I was actually surprised that you threw it my way. Oh. Because I was just like, wow, this is just straight up, upbeat, pop punk. It reminded me of the queers. Yeah, or uh, I thought of the Mean Jeans, too. Oh, be okay. Like, yeah, that's true, too. And then they're from Germany. I just thought that was funny, too, because I, I didn't even know. But yeah, there. I just thought this is just upbeat, like yeah. summertime drinking a, a Bud Light. That's <laughs> so just like, like twelve of them. Like this is the band for that. <laughs> 
I guess now it would be the equivalent is drinking uh, seltzer. Oh, the hard seltzer. Yes, that drinking is the hard, hard seltzer. seltzer. Yeah, summer. It's Almost. the perfect, perfect album. Sewer Rats Magic Summer. Perfect album to go along with drinking the entire 12 pack of hard seltzer. And Sewer Rat is how I'm feeling like the summer myself. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That summer is, is my personal uh, state of mind right yes. now. Yes, yes. So oh. there's a new single from Death by Stereo called Free Gun with Purchase. And I think it's their first, uh, their last album was in 2012. So they were pretty active in early 2000s and toured. And we saw them a bunch of times because they're from... California, so they come through Bay Area quite a bit. They are releasing an album of full length August of this summer, so, okay, so probably it's soon. It's coming. I thought it sounded pretty similar to where they took off from. Yeah. Like it wasn't, which is I thought fun. it was good. They are metalcore. They've always been, and they've yeah. always been a little more of the hardcore punk than the metal. They have a good balance. They have a good balance of they the definitely. metal and the hardcore, but they have enough of the punk where it's not overtaken by the metal. And I, there's, there's some bar where there's too much metal where I don't like metalcore. And they're, you know what I mean? So they have like this really good balance of the punk versus balance. the metal. And I like them both. And they have like these awesome guitar solos and I'm still into it. And they yeah. do the, the raw vocal from time to time, but they still, they still have some, singing like some weird singing it's like system of a down style singing if you want to call it that kind of thing but then he has like um tons of different voices that he does in all these songs yeah singing. and their That's live show is so good awesome. I mean, this that, is one a of my band. top live bands in my life so i, I don't this want to band, do anything bad they're awesome What's crazy to me about Dub by Stereo is that's a band that could have gotten huge. There was yeah. like a whole scene at the time that they were active and all these bands got huge yeah. and big and they just kind of are underappreciated. I don't know why, yeah. but... I don't know. You're right. I mean, like, if there was going to be one band that you would, ex like, really had it. They had everything that all the other bands of that style had that got big. Yeah. You know, like Hatebreed or something like that. Like, I, Death by Stereo, I love them. Like, hey, yeah. man, they're fine. I don't got a problem with them. Yeah. But I mean, like, Death by Stereo, they had the songs. Like, those songs were amazing. Like, oh, they had albums, like three albums in a row that were just hella good. They had really like, good guitar players that would do crazy like, solos. Yes. And the live show was, like, incredible, it's so energetic. Incredible. Super and, awesome. And then we would go see them at Warp Tour, and then it would be, like, us and 20 other people. Yeah. And, like, like and then... But, and that was the height of that whole scene. They were like, too good. They were too good. <laughs> you, know, you know, they say a lot of really good artists are not appreciated while yeah. they're creating their art. So It's maybe. like, you know, I think of like Riverboat Gamblers. Too good. I don't know what. The, they could be played on the radio, Riverboat Gamblers. Yeah. Nope. They don't get played on the radio. They don't make no money. But they yeah. should. Death by Stereo. They should be the, like one of the biggest metalcore bands out there. I don't know what happened. Doesn't make yeah, any sense. Yeah, because there's. There's so many of those bands that were playing like stadium tours yep. and going on like Taste of Chaos tours. There's just like a whole basically tour for just that genre. I mean, we could have them on the show and ask them that question, but is that rude? I don't know. I don't they did know. the must members. Members have come and gone. There must yeah. be you know, stuff going. I mean, you got to make a living, and it's yeah. a very difficult style of music to do to make a living. But other mm -hmm. bands have, yep. have lost oh, even. Yeah you know, have lost founding members and or go on with just the original True. singer. I think Ephraim, the singer, might be the only original member that probably. at this point, probably. Well, yeah. hope to see them come to town next year as well. <laughs> Let's just play a show with Bad Cop, Bad Cop, do a two for one, I'll be happy. Speaking of death by stereo, so one of the bands we would constantly see them with, Nerve Agents. Yeah. And I have a theory that Nerve Agents are reuniting. Ooh, so I'm just putting more. it out there, people. And Are you have a breaking scoop? I I have speculation. <laughs> <laughs> Start rumors. I'm gonna yes. type that in the description of the podcast. <laughs> Nerve agents reforming, according to sources. Okay, maybe I am trying to uh, make manifest. It till you make it? Oh, I am trying okay. to manifest <laughs> a nerve agents reunion because if there's anything I could manifest, that would be up there. But here's why I think. Okay. Okay. 
they are become recently have become active on Instagram and they're okay. posting stuff. Why? That's where my theory comes from. And okay. I just, I'm putting it out there. Maybe it's mostly hope. I think it's a very good theory. I have nothing to counter it as a negative comment. I think it's all solid. At bare minimum, they're going to have to re-release something because like you said, why would you bother to update your website and start yeah. lining up all this stuff if you had nothing going on? So See? if Tsunami then, Bomb could do it, then yeah. nerve agents could do it. Crossing my fingers that that happened. Other new song you huh? had on the list is What's My Race Again by, by the, Muslims. the Muslims. Yes, so that was um, their, uh, I like their own description. I'll read their own description here. From Durham, North Carolina, the Muslims is a crunchy, kick-ass punk band of black and brown queer muzzies. Your racist dad is a piece of shit, and this is not a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> this band is awesome. And so they, they did a cover of that Blink-182 song, and they changed all the words. And yeah. it is awesome. Uh, it's like, it's, uh, I went out, it was a Friday night to the bar and have a beer and cry. The bouncer said, no, no baggy jeans in here, but I was wearing fucking tights. And that's about the time it fucking dawned on me. Nobody loves you when you're black and free. I should have checked the demographics first. What the hell is wrong with me? This bitch said, I don't act my race. What's my race again? What's my race again? I was like, oh, this is awesome. I like this better than the original. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Normally, I'm not a covers guy. I always think, oh, man, a cover. That's just a cheap way to, you know, get famous on uh, YouTube or whatever. And I just yeah. don't respect it. But on this time, I give a pass because it's so good. Well, because it's not, it's kind of like the Faya covers. Like, it, it takes so much effort to rewrite lyrics or translate lyrics. Like, it's not yeah. like you just learned a song by somebody else. You also, you added to it. Yeah. And you're not just, like, dressing up nice and putting out someone else's song that they already did it just because, you know, people already like it. Yeah. So you're just, like, you're not adding anything. But if you, like you said... If you're contributing something new, you're doing something with it. There's a reason why it's more than just, I want people to like me. Well, then that changes things for me at least. And I thought, wow, that's awesome. Check out Muslims. They are awesome. <laughs> They're crazy. Do they have other They songs? got cool albums out there. Okay. So the uh, album is Gentrified Chicken. That's the new one. It just came out at like the end of April. So it's brand new. Awesome. Check it out. It is garage punk awesomeness. It is down and dirty. It is wild. It is like, it's wild. It's um, it's amazing. Uh, definitely check out Muslims. Fire. Okay, and the next fire by Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes. I was I was excited because Frank Carter, he's the old singer of Gallows. Gallows, which I love, they're a hardcore band from England. They have that song Black Eyes, which is just like, and then like Belly of a Shark is another one. Anyway, those are amazing songs. I love this band. And then he he quits the band because he wants to do other things. He puts this, you know, he puts this band together. It's now Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes. It's been he's had other names for various things. They've sounded like Queens of the Stone Age, basically. And you you said yourself, who'd you say they sound like? Blood. It reminded they, me of like Blood Brothers. This a little song bit. does have that spot the where it sounds game. like Blood Brothers. But that and then like. That's the first 45 seconds of that song. It's kind of like the Blood Brothers-y. And then it's just punk. It just becomes yeah. a punk song. And I was just excited because I haven't found, uh, like, the Frank Carter, his new stuff to be more punky like I like it. And then, but then, on the other hand, it, it, you know, you get a strike against you if you're in a band that's got your name in it. So I can't give you an A+. Plus, oh, right. But I can give you an A- minus on this one. I mean, at least he says it's Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes. But wouldn't it just be better if there were the Rattlesnakes? It was probably taken. Yeah, and I did. That's what he really <laughs> do. <laughs> oh, yeah. So anyway, that song Fire, I thought it was fire. It was oh, good. that was And I was good. like, that song might be my pick of the week. But that, like, all the picks of the week this week are awesome. Like, everything is so good this week. This is took a us a month to come up with an month, episode. But, man, so. this episode has the music. I don't know what we're talking about, whether it's any good. But I'm telling you, these bands, this music, this is the good stuff this time. <laughs> and uh, next up, I had Not Again by the OBGMs, which uh, they're from Canada. And oh. uh, their name stands for – I didn't even – know it it was an acronym for anything i just thought it was meaningless but anyway it's the oh baby give me more 
aggressive garage punk, kind of like the hives almost, but like more yelly, more aggressive. Cause the hives kind of had that, like the tight, like they wear yeah. their business suits. They don't, they don't get wild, but their songs are just catchy punk garage stuff there. It's pretty, but professional. Fast, very, it's just a different, this band is just a wild vibe. They're awesome. And the song was called not again. You got to check them out. OBGMs. Again, the thing that drove me nuts, just like Death by Stereo, new release is a single, not an album. So it's just one song. So, uh, hella good. Album I hear is coming out later. I'm going to be looking forward to that album. OBGMs. They're awesome. Nice. Uh, oh, there you go. Due in September. Oh, okay. All right. So we'll have more to talk about in September about them. Yes. I got two more. Okay. Businessman by the band Punk Band. I love the name of the band. Ridiculous band name. I I thought this is a joke. And I thought when I hit the play button on it, I was just like, this is going to be some stupid crap. It's going to be God awful terrible. But it was amazing. It was, I mean, I think this is the song of the week for me. This one, it's just, I like it so much. I can't put my finger on it. It's just, English punk from like 1978, very sex pistol y. It reminds me of that song Join the Professionals by the Professionals, which was like former members of the Sex Pistols back in the day in the like the early 80s. But this is brand new, the song Business. This is it's amazing. It's just like a couple of British punks singing a song about working in the office. And as someone who works in an office, I was like, yes, a punk song about working in the office. This is, this is what it's about. Cannot oh, man. better song than this. So it's good. Kinda like you like the the office, the show, and you used to like a video game that was about doing paperwork <laughs> because funny. you could really relate to it. So yes, so maybe it's a personal pick. Yeah, I, no, the, it was raw, old school punk, just it's, like the way it is supposed to be. Sounds consistent with the type of entertainment you enjoy. <laughs> it's like oh what's that (laughs) you just name anything i'm like oh but does it have anything to do with working in an office (laughs) and if the answer is no i'm not interested but if it is then yes then i like it i think you nailed it there (laughs) yeah that's okay everybody has a preference i mean i i do think hating work is a genre so there's like a whole genre of movies Oh, okay. and shows, and so I do. That is a genre I enjoy. Okay, I think it's okay. like a really relatable genre. It's just usually the risk of that genre is sometimes people don't relate if that's not the type of work they do. Okay, but I feel like I can, I can still relate to even you know the ones about working at a restaurant, which I don't do, or, or something okay. like that. Like I think it's an enjoyable genre because most people can relate that work sucks at least sometimes man we're gonna have to do an old, another show about the genre of not liking work because i mean i'm into it i could go on for hours <laughs> yeah. we, we, we can make a playlist of playlist but anyway start with businessman by punk band i'm gonna call it my pick of the week although i like everything we've talked about this week nice um i got one more and it's no bro with till i get it all Montreal punks. I don't know what it is about Canada. They're killing it with these punks. Anyway, yeah. your garage punk uh, reminded me of Deep Valley. Jeez, that's who they reminded me of. Found this band was on, randomly. They did a cover of uh, a song called Mongoose by Fu Manchu. And I didn't recognize the cover. And I was just like, this is so familiar to me, but it sounds so different. And then anyway, I looked into it, and that's when I found out No Bro, and that was a cover of this Fu Manchu song. Like I was saying, I don't really like covers generally, but and I didn't even know it was the cover because it was so different because, I mean, it's a completely different type of band. Awesome band. No Bro, Till I Get It All is the name of the song. It's new. Check them out. I think I covers everything I had. I think so. Do you have a grudge this week? I do. It's DMV. I mean, low-hanging fruit. Every, I mean, <laughs> low-hanging fruit. Couldn't get my car registration done. Couldn't get my smog test done. This quarantine is ridiculous. I'm not going to go into it too far, but let's just say I'll still be talking about this a month from now. I'm sure of it. 
this is just the beginning, people. That's true. You're just in the beginning process, so this is it's not about good. to get more annoying. If yeah. this wasn't the DMV, I would just give up, but I need to do this to be a <laughs> member of society. Like, if I could just say, forget it, I'm over it, I just lose my money, they just take my money and I'd be done with it. No, I have to continue this path because it's the stupid DMV, and I'm not happy. That sucks. You? My grudge this week is people who will do a gesture to look, to, that seems nice, but it's actually more inconvenient for the person they're doing it for. So I'll give you an example, holding doors or yielding to somebody who's crossing. Those are things that are really nice to do. Unless the person that you're holding the door for is like, three to four minutes away and now you're like running because you feel bad that this person is holding a door and yeah. yes i understand that it is a really nice gesture i hold the doors for everybody obviously if somebody's carrying a giant box or they're carrying a baby or they're carrying a refrigerator like yes you should hold the door even if they're five minutes away it's the nice thing to do but if they are not and you're just now like inconveniencing them to run so that you don't have to hold the door for two more minutes yeah. or if you're yielding for them and they're not even near the crosswalk but then every very much rarer somebody else will like stop and they're like half a street away and they're like go ahead and you're like <laughs> I wasn't now going to run a half a mile. Yet. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, well, now I feel terrible, but this is a, I wasn't even looking like I'm trying to cross the street or I'm walking my dog and she's smelling things or she's trying to pee. And now you're waiting on this. And I'm just like, no, just go. Like, I'm not. And now to you have to, you're now obligated to cross the street, even though you had no intention of yes, cross, no. crossing the street. You just happen to be standing near a crosswalk <laughs> and they're like, oh, go ahead. And you're like, God. Damn it! Yes, I think there's definitely been a time where I had to like bend down, grab my dog, run across the street because, Man. you know, she wasn't cooperating. We weren't ready to cross and wasn't part of our plan. So just be nice, <laughs> but don't do it to just be nice. Think about the other person. Read the room. Time. Well, that about wraps it up for me. Yes, uh, we will be back probably in a week. I will, I will try to be faster, but we will be back next time. Thank you for listening.